Lee Malay McFarlane here, Bellator 283, down here for some fights. I saw you in the commentating booth. How exciting was that fight? Um, that was really awesome, but you know, I'm a huge women's MMA fan, and so, um, you know, despite me and Nina sharing uh, some of history together, it's been so fast and Now you're back in there next month. Uh, what's the camp been like? Talk about those adaptations then. What, what exactly do you mean by that? Uh, pretty much I don't run anymore. <laughs> uh, I do like elliptical and like full workouts and everything. So just lots of low impact training. Uh, it's kind of has to work with um, and different ways to get my cardio up that didn't involve like the running and the impact. So it's more of the strength and conditioning, not the yeah, MMA it, training yeah, itself. Yeah, you know, at the end of the day, you don't really, and I feel like a lot of fighters go through this that as they get um, they don't want to spar anymore. It's not that we don't want to spar, it's just what's the point of sparring? We know how to fight. It's really about just keeping your body healthy and in prime fit condition for the fight. Is that where you're at now then? Like you see guys like Max Holloway, you know, he went he went through phases yeah. where his head seemed all boggled up. And then you saw him after, you know, no sparring sessions and he was the best fighter you've yeah. seen. So is, is, is that sort of where your head is at these days? Yeah, I think so. I, yeah, like Max is a great example. He did that entire camp with no sparring. Uh, and, and you know, yeah, without, no pun intended, but yeah, that, where it, that is where my head is at. Like I want to save my brain cells. Of course. What's left of it. You know, there's have shelf life as fighters and so just again um, just staying as healthy as you possibly can for the next the next chapter post fighting is, is kind of yeah. So you have this next fight, you know, she's sort of an up-and-comer, not not a huge record under her wraps, but do you think a victory over Brun Allen will put you back into title contention? I mean, yeah, you know, I don't think, I don't think Bruna Allen is an up-and-comer. I think she's, like, there. You yeah. Know? Like, we, we were actually signed together um, in that first wave of girls that built the division. And so, uh, yeah, no, I think that, uh, you know, during COVID, she had that long layoff, and so... Or kind of like where did she go? And so I don't, think, I, I don't think she's up with her right age. But with that said, um, I think that if I do win this fight, I'm gonna have to fight again. And I have my eyes very closely. If you guys saw on the Celtic photo card, is uh, Justine Kitch, my foe that I just lost to, you know, a couple months ago. Justine Kitch is having a rematch against Deanna Bennett, who um, is definitely in title contention. So I think winner of that fight probably get a title shot but you know it's crazy our division is so um, so thick that like everybody who meets with everybody the rankings are all crazy right now because you know I somebody that I lost to just beat this person who I beat so it's kind of MMA math never works. I, yeah. I mean, I've talked to Janae Harding a ton, who's your friend, yes. and, and she says the exact same thing. So at this point, you know, I feel like with a win, anybody can make the, uh, the argument that they deserve title shot. At the end of the day, you know, you said you're not getting any younger. Obviously, the eye is still on the prize. Yes, I mean, yeah. Like, who wants to fight and not be number one? I, mean, I guess there are fighters like that, but no. I mean, of course, I would want to get the belt back and retire as a champion bring that belt back home to the islands, but see, I, I, again, I'm not getting any younger, but you know, with age comes wisdom and experience. Good luck.